Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers, I'm Mike, and today we're going to go over installing virtual machines in Proxmox. To get started, go ahead and get logged into the web interface of your Proxmox environment. The first thing you want to do is to make sure that you have an ISO for the OS you want to deploy virtually. I'll assume you've already set up the appropriate storage, but if not, I'll link a video on configuring storage in the description. So, go ahead and go to your node, and then find the storage where your ISOs live. If you don't already have the ISO here that you want to use, you'll need to upload it by going to Upload, and then selecting the file locally on the computer that you're accessing Proxmox from. I already have a few of my more commonly used ISOs here in my ISO network share, so I won't need to upload any ISOs for this. So let's get started creating the virtual machine. In the top right, you'll click Create VM. Here, you'll assign a name, a VM ID, and the node you would like it to be installed to. Right now I just have the one node. I'll leave the VM ID as 100 for now, and since we'll be installing Ubuntu Server, I'll name it Ubuntu Server 01. Now down here before we click Next, make sure you've selected Advanced. This will give us a few more customization options. You can select whether or not to have it start at boot. I would like this to start as the Proxmox host boot, so I'll select that. The start and shutdown order is where we can assign a value that will tell the host which order to start the VM at boot. Startup delay is the number of seconds that the Proxmox host will wait before starting up the VM at boot. And shutdown timeout is the maximum number of seconds that the host will wait before forcibly turning off the VM during a shutdown. I'll leave these as default for now, so go ahead and hit next. In our OS selection, we'll be using an ISO file from our storage. Here, I'll select the ISO storage, and the image will be Ubuntu Server. You also have the option of booting from a physical disk that is inserted into the host machine if you would like. We'll leave the type as Linux and version the same. If this was a Windows install, you would instead choose Microsoft Windows, and then the version of Windows that you're trying to install. Go ahead and hit Next. Here you can select system options, such as specific graphics and SCSI options, as well as BIOS and the machine's virtual chipset. We'll check the QEMU agent to allow the QEMU guest agent to communicate information about the VM to the host. The rest of these options can be left as default for now. Hit Next. On the next screen, you'll be configuring your main hard disk. For bus slash device, it should automatically be set to which one Proxmox recommends for the guest OS. Since we're using Linux, it's selected SCSI, but on Windows, it will usually want to use IDE. We'll leave caching at default for now. Under storage, you can select where you want to store the disk for this VM. We'll go ahead and choose to store this in our ZFS pool. And then you'll set the disk size. We'll go ahead and leave that at 32 gigabytes for now. For the advanced options down there, I would say only change those if you know exactly what you're doing. I'll leave those as default, and then click Next. For CPU, this will be how much processing power we want to allocate to the VM. I'll give it one socket, and my rule of thumb is two cores to start out with, until we know what the hardware need will actually be. This can always be changed later. For advanced settings, again, I'll leave these as default, and hit Next. Here, we'll allocate RAM in megabytes. I'll go ahead and give it four gigabytes. And make sure to leave ballooning checked, which will ensure that the RAM is used dynamically, otherwise it'll block off the entirety of the RAM and assign it just to this virtual machine. On the next screen, we'll assign a network interface. If you don't want to connect a network, or if you want to add that later, you can check the No Network Device box up here. Here you'll select the bridge adapter, we'll leave it as VMBR0 as that's the only adapter we currently have. The model will automatically be selected based on the guest OS you're using. Vert.io is usually used for Linux, and you'll usually use the Intel model for Windows. You can assign a VLAN tag if you want to place the machine on a specific VLAN, as well as a custom MAC address if you like. I'll leave the rest of this blank and click Next. Give it one last glance before finishing up to make sure that everything looks right, then click Finish to create the virtual machine. You can see when it's finished creating, the task at the bottom says that the status is OK. And here, you can see the virtual machine has been created. When you click on the virtual machine, it'll bring you to a summary page, showing you the same information about the guest OS that you can see on the summary page of the Proxmox node. The console is where you'll go to see what would be displayed visually on the machine, similar to a monitor. Along the top right, you have the options to start and to shut down the VM. Let's go ahead and click Start. While the VM is running, you also have the option under the shutdown menu here to reboot, pause, hibernate, stop, or reset the virtual machine. 
Next to that is the console. When you click on it, a console window will pop out, allowing you to have multiple consoles up for multiple machines if you need. We'll close out of this, and then under more options, you can see it gives you the option to clone, convert the VM to a template, you can manage high availability, or you can remove the virtual machine. Note that the machine will have to be completely shut down or turned off to be removed. The Hardware tab allows us to change the hardware configuration. For instance, if you want to add or remove a device like a virtual network adapter or a virtual hard drive, or if you want to mount an ISO, this is where you'll do it. The Options tab allows us to change some of the options, such as whether it starts at boot, the boot order, and a few other things. The Task History tab gives us a brief history of tasks that are related to this virtual machine. Under Backups, you can create, manage, and restore from backups. This is an extremely useful feature, which I will be going over later. Under Snapshots, you are able to take and to roll back to snapshots of the machine. This is helpful if you're about to make a configuration change on the machine, and you might need to be able to undo them quickly. There are many other options, but I'll go over those in other videos. For now, let's go back up here to the console. Once you have your machine created and the install media is attached, you'll go about the install process just as you would on a bare metal machine. I'll go ahead and skip through the actual install here and get back to you once I've finished installing Ubuntu Server. I'll add a note here that whenever you've finished installing an operating system, you'll need to unmount the install media by going to Hardware, find the CD DVD drive, double click, and then select Do Not Use Any Media. This will unmount the ISO file, and then you can reboot your machine and it will load into the OS. So now we have a fully updated install of Ubuntu, and I've gone ahead and created a Windows Server VM, which will become our domain controller in the future. Now we can demonstrate our last step, which is installing the QEMU guest services. Installing QEMU services allows Proxmox to more easily exchange information between itself and the guest OS, such as current status, freezing the file system when taking backups, and executing commands within the OS like shutdowns and restarts. The first thing we need to do is ensure that QEMU services are enabled by going into the VM and checking the options for QEMU guest agent. We want to make sure that this is enabled. Now let's go back up to our console. On Linux, installing QEMU guest services is as simple as running one command, which will be sudo apt install qemu-guest-agent. Wait for it to complete, and then we'll reboot. Once it's rebooted, you can go up to the VM summary and make sure it's detected. If it's displaying an IP right here, you know that the guest service is installed and functioning. For instance, if we go to our Windows machine, which doesn't have it, in the summary right here, it'll tell us no guest agent configured. Now let's install the guest services for Windows. We'll do the same thing under Options and make sure that QEMU guest agent is enabled. Right now it's disabled, so we'll have to change that. And in order for that to apply, we'll need to reboot the machine. You can do that by going up to the top right and selecting Reboot, and hit Yes. We'll go to the console here and let the reboot finish. Now in Windows, installing the QEMU guest services isn't quite as simple. Before we're able to install the guest services, we'll need to mount the Windows Vert IO drivers ISO provided by Proxmox, which I'll leave a link to down below. I already have it in my ISO storage, so let's go ahead and go to Hardware, find our CD DVD drive. We'll change it from the already mounted Server 2019 ISO to the Vert IO Win ISO. Hit OK. Go back to your console. We'll get logged into Windows by using our extra keys function to hold down Control Alt and then hit Delete. Enter our password. Once we're booted into Windows, you can open up the File Explorer. Go to this PC, double click on the CD drive. And to install the guest tools, you'll go down here to the Vert IO Win Guest Tools executable and enter. It'll bring up an install wizard. We'll simply click through the options here. Hit next, agree, next, next, and install. Install here. And then finish. Close out. 
and you shouldn't need to reboot. If you go to Summary, you can see that the QEMU guest agent is installed and functioning properly. All right, that about wraps it up for this one. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues, let me know down below, and I'll see you in the next video.